Hi, welcome to Supporting Effective Behaviour Cultures. I'm Tom Bennett, Lead uh, Behaviour Advisor to the Department for Education. Hi, and I'm Jane Lowe, um, Behaviour Advisor to uh, the Advisor team. In today's session, what we want to try and do is provide uh, a number of things, an overview of the Behaviour Hubs programme, and Tom's going to talk through that in some more detail in a little while. Um, he's also going to talk about effective behaviour culture um, and explain how that fits into the programme and how it shapes the programme. We want to share with you the audit tool um, that will hopefully support you in your work and how to refer into the programme. A lot of this has been based on creating a culture, which I wrote in 2017 as part of a DFA project. Um, one of the things we found with the, with the highest performing schools with the best behaviour cultures was that they had a really clear understanding of what their school culture was. Behaviour is always important for schools, but arguably it's never been more important to get it right, particularly when we return in September and we need to try to make sure that the behaviour isn't just where it should be in order to achieve better learning, but also to make sure we can maximise safety and hygiene and so on. So the most effective schools understood what their culture was, and by that I mean they knew what their beliefs and values were about what mattered at school. It's crucial that staff and students understand what not only should they believe and value to be healthy and effective members of staff and parts of the student body, but also how they should behave. How do those beliefs then map onto behaviours, exact, concrete, specific behaviours? Everything we know about student behaviour suggests that students really appreciate knowing what it is they should be doing, and that very often we expect them to behave in a way that they themselves don't quite appreciate or understand themselves. It's important to have high expectations of students and, and staff, and crucially, most school leaders think that they have expectations, but not everybody actually does. And normally this is because we usually justify to ourselves that our, we think our expectations are high when sometimes they're not. It's crucial that we hold staff and students to high standards and that students and staff are aware of this. In order to make this happen, it's incredibly important that we're consistent and have high levels of attention to detail. Vague, willy, uh, pronouncements about making sure you behave doesn't mean very much to staff and students. They need to know exactly and in what detail um, the behaviours are going to be. And in order for that to be effective, it has to be very consistent across time and throughout the school, which requires a lot of systematisation of routines and behavioural standards. Now, it's important to point out that this doesn't mean a one size fits all approach. Not all schools have to be the same. Not all schools have to observe the same rules, regulations and routines. But what's terribly important is that the school is hyper aware of its own rules, routines, expectations and values and norms, teaches it to students and staff and then make sure that they themselves are consistent throughout time and throughout the school. So it's essentially being an excellent version of yourself. Some of the main principles of behaviour management that informs the most effective schools that we saw through writing Creating a Culture were things like the most effective schools understood the types of things that tend to influence student behaviour, both individually but also as groups, because students are, of course, social creatures as well as individuals. So we have to understand the types of things that motivate them, the types of things that get them out of bed in the morning, and the types of things that help them to understand how they learn. But we also have to appreciate that the types of behaviour we want to see in students and staff is not often natural or obvious to them. And then we might be asking some students to do or perform habits or behaviours that they themselves find quite hard. If you're very used to, for example, focusing or being patient or waiting your turn, you might find it difficult to appreciate why some people don't know that that's the obvious thing to do. But some people haven't been uh, exposed to those types of uh, social and cultural capital experiences and find it difficult to do so, which means that schools need to teach these types of behaviours to students, which has never been more important or opposite than now when we'll be expected to teach students and staff um, habits and routines of respiratory and tactile etiquette that they might themselves not be used to or they might find a wee bit strange or unusual. So it's important that we're clear about the behaviour we want them to, to perform in order for them to be clear about it. And also, crucially, this means teaching them the behaviour, not just telling them the behaviour. If you just tell students to behave, they may or may not do it. The same with members of staff. But if you teach it to them or train them in these habits and behaviours, it's far more likely that they'll remember them and be able to execute them. It's important that schools use these strategies at a whole school level 
and at a classroom level that classroom teachers are themselves taught the types of routines that you want them to execute in the classrooms in order for them to be able to achieve the type of whole school consistency that you need in order to be successful. It's also crucial, I might add, to involve all members of staff in this, including administrative staff, um, auxiliary staff, catering staff, and so on. Use routines, which you might see as being the kind of the building block of healthy school cultures, because we want to teach the types of behavior we want to see repeated time and time again, which means teaching routines. Tailor targeted approaches to individuals who present either more challenge or require more support. Walk towards these students, walk towards these members of staff even, the people that need more support, rather than waiting for them to misbehave or to mess up. So if we can proactively teach these behaviours, it's far more likely that they'll, they'll succeed. And if these things are all tied together, then we have a successful whole school approach rather than a piecemeal reactive approach to behaviour management. Now, one of the main reasons that we're doing this is to try to support schools with the full reopening in September. Now, I like to stress that these have been extraordinary times for everybody. Nobody hasn't been touched by, 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 by COVID-19 in some shape or form. It makes sense for us though to be cautious about expecting all students and staff to come back to school in a traumatised or unstable state. Um, for a great many students and staff, Returning to school is something which they want to do and they aspire to do if it can be achieved safely. And for many students in particular, school is, is, is a place of great sucker to them, both academically, but also socially. They want to see their friends and they want some sense of, of, of normality returning to their lives. So I think it's very, very useful for schools to be able to provide that sense of reassurance, that structure, that routine and scaffold that, as well as being sensitive to the fact that some students and staff will have been touched by trauma or tragedy um, throughout the past three or four months, that for whom the last three or four months will have been very, very testing time indeed. So making sure that we've got facilities available for them and that we're sensitive to that. Schools will need to make some changes to reset their behaviour and attendance expectations. And this is probably a good chance for schools to revisit what behaviour they do expect students and staff to perform, to be conscious of it, to communicate it clearly and to train it clearly, and also to consider any additional support that might be required to help students with greater needs and to help them reintegrate back into the school community. So the checklist for behaviour and attendance, which was published in July 2020, includes the idea that we need to plan for returning in advance of returning. We need to communicate what these plans are to all stakeholders in the school and also beyond the school, like parents, and try to do so before the school year begins in order for staff, students and parents to be as ready as possible. When schools reopen, to be as consistent as possible with these plans, to support anybody who needs support in order to achieve these new standards, and then to monitor those standards and to, and to really hold people to account in a transparent and positive way in order that people can improve their behaviour and meet the new standards required of them in September. An audit tool has been part of our thinking as a behaviour advisor team since we first came together as a team um, and we felt it's really important to enable and empower schools to establish an accurate picture of behaviour culture across the school and into its school community. And so it was an essential part of the Behaviour Hubs programme, um, whether that be for referral onto the Hubs programme um, as part of establishing an accurate picture of where you are going back to schools fully reopening and also uh, in supporting those schools facing challenges around behaviour who want to identify where they are. We felt it was really important to have the tool as a positive re resource to focus on what does a really effective culture look like and so it's phrased in such a way to focus on what needs to happen next. Um, we see the tool as useful to NLEs and school leaders. We don't see this as a one-off assessment. We would love to see schools using this as a school improvement tool to establish a baseline and then think about how they work towards that continuum of improvement. Um, and it's going to be used as a tool to refer into the Hubs programme, as we said, and to establish a baseline alongside NLEs in partnership. Now, the behaviour audit tool has been composed um, a bit resting on some evidence sources which we've used as foundational documents. So, for example, one of the main documents has probably been the Creating a Culture 
um, document written in 2017, which is freely available online, which outlines many of the things that school leaders can do in order to try to create the healthiest behaviour culture they can. While it's designed for school leaders of all levels, it is also probably quite useful for members of staff too. We've relied on the School Inspection Handbook from off to 2019 uh, as a guidance document. We've also looked at the teacher standards from 2013, of course, as something which is very foundational. And we've also looked at Charlie Taylor's behaviour checklist, which is also freely available on the DfE website. This is a simple procedural systematic checklist that, that classroom teachers can use in order to minimise the possibility of misbehaviour in the classrooms. Uh, rather than to eliminate the, the risk of it. So um, we recommend all these to you um, as foundational documents. The audit focuses on six focus areas um, and as NLE is working with schools, you will probably already have intelligence about the schools that you're working with in these six areas. Um, the first one, leadership and management, really deals with uh, the vision, the clarity of it and the implementation of it. And the audit helps us find out how robust that is. Um, systems and social norms. Tom's already spoken about those areas at length, but it's about really how does this school run? Um, is it consistent? Is it effective? Does everyone know what's expected of them? Relationships are a central part um, of any school community and so they've got a really important place within the audit and it really forgets um, school leaders and NLEs thinking about is there a respectful culture here and what does culture look like. Um, both staff and students have their own areas within the audit and these are really focused on how staff and students are welcomed into the school, what kind of training and support do they have to know how the school runs, what the expectations are, what's expected of them and do they know what to expect. So those are two areas aim to get to the bottom of that. Student support, the final area, is really about the pastoral support systems, what do the structures look like, are they proactive, are they targeted and are they tailored and do they support the smooth running of the school, but also making sure that children can access learning and that the culture is strong and effective in relation to behaviour? When using the tool, we don't expect it to be a standalone. We see it as a tool that's accompanied by a range of information intelligence that you might already be privy to. Um, we'd want um, the audit tool to form part of a library alongside the school's Ofsted report and performance data. Um, we'd want NLEs to read alongside with school leaders the school development plan and self-evaluation and their most recent head, um, head teachers report to governors to find out is there a focus on behaviour, is it prioritised in those documents. Um, we'd also see, you know, what you see and what you hear within a school, observations at key times, and also some modelling and support learning walks with school leaders, so that school leaders know what, what to look at, what to look for, what to listen for, the kind of questions to ask. All of that data and intelligence would sit alongside the behaviour audit tool to give a fuller picture. We've put together a continuum to enable NLEs and school leaders in partnership to score or position where the school is. And when doing this, we'd hope there was going to be a conversation between the NLE and school leader, a challenge, two-way conversation, um, to pose those questions about where are we now and how do we know, where is the evidence for that? So the continuum we've we've outlined really is a journey. So are they at the beginning, identifying where leaders are beginning to get an idea of what's happening in the school, that may be through the audit, or are they starting to bring in systems and focus on key areas, right up to sustaining where a school's running well, there's consistent practice, everyone's engaged and everyone's running the school culture. When populating the audit tool, again, we'd see this as a partnership exercise um, where the position of the school would be discussed and agreed between NLE and school leaders, and so one, two, three, four allocated. But we'd also see the audit tool becoming a bit of a directory of evidence. So evidence um, of where that had been seen or heard or even reported on could be recorded in the audit tool so that it gave a useful directory to school leaders and NLEs to go and refer back to. Once the um, audit had been undertaken and your work with the school was underway and you've got some idea of where is the school up to, 
we'd like to identify some support and interventions that you might want to consider may have already um, have in place, but certainly sitting down and reviewing the findings with the senior leadership team, having that support and challenge conversation. Um, the audit might throw up some things that maybe you or the school leaders weren't aware of or some anomalies maybe, where you want to do some deep dives, find out more, maybe through anonymous surveys or discussions with key focus groups to get a real feel for what do people feel, that's students, staff and other stakeholders too. Um, support for the action planning process would be helpful for school, some school leaders to think about what are the obvious next steps, what are the first things I need to have in place. You might be going back to the school to visit, so picking up some of those learning walks or modelling those activities for school leaders on return visits would be helpful. It would also be useful to signpost um, leaders towards a really good um, set of reading material, creating a culture, the checklists and the parental engagement toolkit from EVE would be really useful starting points for leaders to, to upscale in terms of behaviour culture. And also using this information to refer into the Behaviour Hubs programme. Yes, and one thing I would add to what Jane just said there, which was if you were to use, for example, anonymous staff or student surveys, you could then use that as a baseline to identify any progress um, as your program of intervention goes on. So that may be a useful thing to consider. OK, so the Behaviour House programme will uh, work with schools and also multi-academy trusts. And the aim is to take mats and schools with exemplary behaviour uh, to become lead schools and these lead schools would then work in partnership with schools that wanted to improve their behaviour and we would call them partner schools and um, it's funded by the DfE, it's free for participating schools and schools have to be referred onto the programme in order to be a partner school. The lead school um, recruitment process is already ongoing and obviously allocation will be based on needs so we're targeting schools with the following eligibility criteria. For example, uh, an Ofsted requires improvement judgment, this will ensure that um, at least in, in the first instance, schools will be targeted with the most need. They also have to have behaviour issues, which obviously can involve some interpretation given that behaviour affects many aspects of, of school culture. Crucially, they'll also have to have leadership capacity. Um, leaders will, will, will have to um, be willing and able to be part of the programme, but perhaps simply lack direction rather than, than capacity. And probably above and beyond everything else, is that the school leaders have to be extremely motivated to participate in the programme. They have to meaningfully engage not just with the programme, but the values and the ethos underpinning the programme, um, which means we're not looking for schools to be referred unwillingly onto the programme. They, they need to want to improve. The support offer will be based on several levels. And once you're referred onto the programme, you'll have access to several different types of support. For example, it might be uh, a longer one-to-one -one in depth analysis over eight to 12 days involving action planning with the lead school mentoring, offering ongoing advice and so on. Or perhaps it could be a shorter package. It could be an action planning surgery with a lead school to provide advice or challenge on the partner school's behavior processes. Or it might be a mat-to-mat -mat support to consider mat-wide approaches in order to uh, roll out uh, change at perhaps a faster level. And also, there'd be access to the following different types of support. For example, training events developed and in some cases delivered by the behaviour advisor team. Open days at lead schools to observe good behaviour management and practice. Um, hub networking events where schools could meet other schools involved in the programme to share their own practices. And free online resources which would be curated and sometimes designed by the behaviour advisors themselves. Now, how to refer schools and mats onto the behaviour hubs? First of all, the, the NLE has to find the behaviour audit tool and populate that with the data that Jane was referring to uh, earlier on, as well as providing a rationale for the referral, recommending the support pathway and confirming that the school meets the eligibility criteria. That's part one. Part two is that the NLE will also have to complete a COVID-19 recovery feedback form. And when doing so, you must tick the box that says referral to Behaviour Hubs programme. And once those steps have been taken uh, and the school of the mat has been referred to the Behaviour Hubs programme, then the DfE will take forward the, the processes for shortlisting and onboarding schools or mats. So we hope you have found that useful and we hope you found that useful process. Um, if you want to know more, please visit the behaviourunddiscipline.gov.uk page 
uh, for further information, resources and support. And we wish you uh, all the luck. Thank you very much. Thanks.